Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. Here with Benji Nyson on the Sunday, nineteenth near nineteenth of September for the World Championships ITT Men's Recap Women's tomorrow on the Monday. Somewhat curiously, this show is brought to you by our show partner Lacole. Speaking of time trialing or speed, you can check out Lacole's Project Aero McLaren collaboration through the link down below some of the fastest kit available on the market the speed suit there's normal uh jerseys and mix for uh, general road racing as well so thanks to colt for su- supporting the podcast but on to this tt the favorites in the, in this order in the betting markets remember were ghana kung very close in odds Evan Paul and Wa Fanart fourth, then a big gap to the likes of Bissiger and Co. And we had a 43.3 kilometer course from Nokhaste to Bruges, very flat, about seven turns, two intermediate time checks at about 13 kilometers, and I think with about 12 kilometers to go with 30 Ks done or so. And you know how we do TT recounts. We cut to the chase. Evan Paul went into the hot seat as expected. He had to go early relative to the other favourites because he was on the same team as well for now. He went a bit earlier, whereas uh, the likes of Athene didn't, etc. So Evan Paul went early, best time of 48.31, a slow first intermediate, and then he sped up throughout the course. We'll talk about the splits a bit more in detail at the end. Then Van Aert was, I think, the second last to go because Gano was the defending champion. Van Aert destroyed Evan Paul's time at the first intermediate, but then... Got a bit close. Oh, then held that to Avon Apol, but Ghana was seven seconds behind him at the first intermediate, only 0.84 behind him at the second intermediate. Ghana also uh, loves to negative split his TTs, and then Ghana beats Wafanart in the World Championships time trial for the second year in a row by 5.4 seconds, I believe, with a time of 47.47, 54.3 kilometer an hour average. In a 50-minute effort, Benji Wafanart second once again. But what a performance from Ghana. He didn't even look like he was pushing through the corners, taking too many risks. It was just everything under control. Yes, certainly. Belgium is a, a shattered nation right now having a, that second spot, but not the first one, not the gold-plated uh, medal that Ghana is taking home. But he deserves it. What a wonderful ride. He uh, tended to uh, take it. A bit slower at the first part, like you mentioned, compared to a Van Aert, and it felt like Evenepoel was not even on the podium picture if you looked at just the first time check. But what I noticed when it comes to Evenepoel when it comes to this ride is that during his ride, he made the biggest difference on the person that was ahead of him before he arrived at that time check at the second time check. So I thought the second part in the time trial was likely going to be a fast one. And... It only really struck me the moment that we saw the likes of an Asgreen and a Kung pass that second time check that Evenepoel's time at between like time check one and two was a really strong time. And I think only two people actually beat that time, which is indeed Ghana and Van Aert between T1 and T2. But I think that's how he uh, how he did it as well. Evenepoel with a bit of a negative split in that way. Ghana certainly with a negative split in that first part as well, but very minimal, you know, because we're talking about seconds here across a, a parkour of 43.3 kilometers. It could just as well be that he pushed a tiny bit harder accidentally in the second part as well. So uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I could call this a, a pure negative split on Ganas. And t- to be honest, I think it's just a very good, strong time trial all around by him and Fanad. And outside of like the top three, I think that we need to look at a few other people as well. But first, Wout Fanad, first time check. Best time, second time check, best time. And uh, I think he should have learned from Kreisweg and perhaps hired a dragonfly to sit over his shoulder and <laughs> give him some extra watts in the third part of the time trial because he lost it by such a minimal time. And I, I swear, if if you probably were on the finishing line here or around the finishing line, the sadness in all the Belgians, oh, I, I bet it's everybody salty on that little plain area right there. <laughs> I think it's crazy because Ghana knew he won across the line with, yeah. with the gap being so small. Obviously, they might have, must have told him over the radio. But, yeah, the he was the favorite for the course, but 
the the rider we haven't mentioned, Benji, if I go through the top 10 now, the top 10 being Ghana, then Van Aert, Evenepoel, as I said, take rounding out the medals. Asgren was only two seconds behind Evenepoel. He was seven seconds ahead of him at the first intermediate and then seven seconds, lost 14 to him in the T1 to T2 and then finished two seconds behind him. So Evenepoel, very strong T1 to T2. Stefan Kuhn comes fifth, who beat Ghana at the European Championships and... I don't want to crow too much, but I will because, you know, this is the You're platform allowed. to do it. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first one, two, three podium I've called all year probably. I called Ganawa, <laughs> Fanat, Avenapol in that order. And then people are like, what about No Kung? He's second favorite. He won a European champs. And I was like, European champs is it's Burgos. It's Tour of the Alps. It's fake. It's it's not. <laughs> it's, it's fake. I said, Ghana doesn't want to win a jersey that he doesn't get to wear for a year unless somehow they can make a hybrid jersey with world champs and European champs on it. But they can't do that, so he doesn't care. And we saw a different Ghana today compared to the one uh, at the European About Championships. That, I've got a great idea. What if a rider has a nationality that is both in Africa and a second nationality that is in Europe? Could he get like a hybrid shirt of the African and European Championships? True. Could I do that? Could I get the Australian one and the uh, yeah and then I've got the yeah you'll, the you'll be doing one. in a sprint at least <laughs> no, maybe uh, but rounding out the top ten Tony Martin sixth one of his best TTs in a long time actually he said he prepared for this and he's retiring I think after this race even that was announced today Stefan think Bissig, after relay okay after Mr. relay I apologise to Tony Martin Bissiger seventh <laughs> Hater uh, the best British rider eighth. Athene ninth, and then Pagacha tenth, one second ahead of Volscheid. So between Tony Martin in sixth and tenth, uh, actually fair gaps, about 35 seconds. So a really good TT from Tony Martin. He was only 11 seconds after Stefan Kung. But what about Kung, Benji? I mean, we can't see his power. I don't know if he's actually done less today or Ganna and Wout van Aert have done more, or is it the fact that the longer TT, the double the length, just doesn't suit him as much because he he faded a little bit. T1, he was 10 seconds behind Ghana, and then he finishes a minute and seven seconds behind Ghana in fifth and goes behind Avonapol and Asgren. So either, I don't know, what, what, do you, what did you see from Kung today? I think when it comes to time trials like this, we uh, can't look solely at fading. I think we need to look into the potential approach that these riders took on the longer time trial because a Kung on a 20k time trial can say to himself, I'm going to ride this watts for the uh, 20 kilometers and I'm going to do that. If he's a 43 kilometer time trial, he's going to say, I'm going to ride it at likely a lower wattage than what I would have done on a 20k parkour. And perhaps that pre-planned wattage for Kung is lower than what a Wout van Aert can sustain for 43 kilometers. So I don't think fading shows the entire big picture, if you know what I mean. And I think that's what happened to King Kung here, not King. Well, King Kung was last week, but not this time around. Nonetheless, Kung rode the initial part also not at the times that Van Aert and Ghana did. So that is slower than them, obviously. But perhaps that is also because he pre-planned to ride his time trial at a certain wattage, and that wattage is lower than what Ghana and Van Aert can plan for that entire time trial. Does that make any sense for you? Yeah. I think it'd be, I'd love to know, and it'd be, you know, I wish we could see what everyone did here. Speaking of Watts, a rider I want to pick out, Dan Bigham. Yes. The British rider who you might not have heard of. He's a continental rider, rides for Ribble. He also, I believe, is an engineer. He's part of Who Walk Bike to Track, all the track stuff. I think he's going for an hour record. He's like an aero specialist. I think he has also a separate business associated with that. I believe he's helped Jumbo Visma yes. as well in their setup, their aero setup and Jumbo Visma is a step change difference in how good their TTs have been this year compared to last year in my view across the board. He came 16th with 49.58 which you're saying oh 16th you know two minutes behind Ghana. got to realize like whatever setup he has is obviously outrageously fast because I'm not being I'm not like trying to be mean to him, but uh, his watts aren't that good compared to Filippo Ganna's. And he's beating riders like Björk, Craddock, Sobrero, McNulty, Kvyatkovsky, Lechnusun, Benjamin Tomar. Um, Skip Gibbons there. <laughs> I'll skip Gibbons, yeah. Um, the Cypriot rider actually did all right. Um, but yeah, he, yeah. he's beating also riders like Also at European champs, I think. Sorry. Did, did um, he? Andreas yeah. Militaris. 
he did a decent time trial at some point. European champs, 25th as well. Um, so also surprised me, to be honest. All right. He's the one to watch. Andreas uh, Miltiadis, Conti Rada for Gios. Anyway, yeah, Dan Bigham clearly very, very... And you can see, uh, if you watch the... If you want to just go and watch one section, go watch his in, uh, T1. There's a small chicane. And you see him do it and then Volscheid straight afterwards. And Bigham is able to stay in the error position the entire time. And Volscheid and almost every other rider had to get out of TT position. So I'll be interested to see who he's working with next year to help with uh, World Tour riders with their TT. But, yeah, I just wanted to note that as a, uh, an interesting performance. But Ethan Hayter, Benji, the other British rider, in eighth on a long TT beating Athene, He's going to be hard to beat. In, do you reckon he's ready to win World Tour one week races next year, Ethan Hayter? Is he winning one with that TT? Yeah, I, th- I think he definitely can because there's levels in the amount of like skill that is required to win a World Tour race between like Tour de Polonia versus looking at a race like uh, Catalonia or or Basque Country. I'd, I'd rate Basque Country relatively high compared to a Polonia that I'd rate relatively lower than those races and. To be honest, if you put Ethan Hater on the parkour of Tour de Polonia and we look at that, how it's ridden with those hill sprints and stuff like that, where he was good at Tour of Britain at. So I would say that he could easily top three Tour de Polonia next year if they sign him up for that. For sure. And I even want to see him, if everyone goes to Torreno, I'd like to see him at Paris-Nice as well. There's one mountaintop finish, which they often do pretty slowly. Can Hater climb as well as Tish Minot? Probably not, but he can take time in the TTs and the punchy finishes. So he is definitely if the Geraint Thomas replacement, I think, uh, at Ineos, Ethan Hater. Otherwise, Stefan Bissiger, Bissiger Benji, I actually think a pretty good TT, and he went from 11th at the first intermediate and then 7th at the end. Now, he's a long way behind Ghana. He's a minute 30 behind and a minute 20 behind Wafanar or so. But I think he did a pretty good TT for what we think he's good at. Um, yeah, in, in seventh, I'll just note that there. But going back to the favourites, I think Ghana, Wafanar and Avon Do you think Avon will even be disappointed with this? Because if I was him, I'd be like, this is a fantastic result. I would personally be very happy if I was Evan Apple, but I feel like he's not the kind of person that he's happy when he's losing. So I wouldn't know how he's feeling right now. But I think overall he's going to realize that bronze at this World Championships is very good. And with every performance that he does, he has to also remind himself, look at where the dude came from last year. Has it been a year since he crashed in Lombardia? Like, it's crazy how how he's come back already and how he's at the top of his game already and... To be honest, like, give me a month, one and a half ago, the time trials that Evenpool was doing, and I was like, okay, for World Championships, it's not looking overly impressive. And he's grown a lot in the last month alone, I feel like, and I'm happy to see him perform very well because quite clearly I'm Belgian, so in that aspect, I am very supportive of Belgian athletes. Nonetheless, uh, he was not good enough to win today, and that was clear, but he actually uh, lost his bottle in the middle, and that's something I do want to talk about. Do you think that influenced a lot i personally don't think so but what do you think about his bottle uh apparently there's supposed to be an aero benefit um for it like it's supposed to be an aero fairing the bottle is like a actually shape to fit in with the course of uh, the, the frame properly whether i presume they do need a hydrate otherwise they wouldn't have it you see guys drinking from the bottle they prefer to be able to hydrate throughout it's a 50 minute effort or whether it's like sugar a sugary drink in there which obviously being able to flush the mouth with sugar uh helps as well proven to that's improved you see bernal often there's been eating taking gels with like 700 meters left to go in a climb for that reason one would think um but yeah it didn't seem to bother him mentally like he wasn't there was no tantrum at the end. There was no, and apparently, on, <laughs> have you heard on TV, like or on Twitter, he's like, if I just had my bottle, I would have done even better. Uh, I heard he was suing the entire bottle company. So <laughs> I don't know, man. It looks like a war is brewing. Nonetheless, uh, I also think it wasn't too big of a difference when it comes to Arrow. Indeed, that gives a slight bonus. But I think we're talking about like a one second, perhaps across a parkour like this, or one to three seconds. But hey, I'm not an expert at that. About hydration, I would expect it's on the border of needing hydration. I don't think it's the end of the world to not hydrate for that amount of time during that performance. But like you said, I think that flushing of the mouth is a big thing. 
But uh, in the end, I don't think it would have uh, moved the needle when it comes to placing him to silver or, uh, I don't know, even uh, to... Uh, no, probably not to fourth because I don't know why it would go to fourth <laughs> by having a bottle on your back. The weight, man, come on. <laughs> it was 38 seconds to Van Aert. That's that's a big gap. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, but a good performance from Remco. Pancake flat course, which is another thing I want to talk about, Benji. Why did Belgium create a course perfect for Philippe Gannon with 22 meters of climbing? And remember we said on the preview, it's like because we – We've had a few. I've had a few shockers in the TTs this year, uh, particularly the uh, the Olympics TT. But we did, I think, get this preview pretty right in that Ghana. I was like, Ghana up to fifty minutes is fine. If you look, I looked through all his results. It's like fifty minutes is fine. I liked his Olympics TT, and then they, Belgium created this course that suits him perfectly. I think if there's two hundred and fifty meters of climbing dotted around this course with some punchy hills, Benji. Or even 200 meters, Juan well, Fanart finds those six seconds. And even if there were some more corners and technical sections and cobbles, why didn't Belgium do that? As a as the uh, all knower of what goes okay. on in the Belgian cycle I've federation, got, I've got multiple responses. I've got first of all the meme response. <laughs> They're not like Prudhomme who chooses a parkour that fits Ala Philippe in 2019, and then um, it doesn't really work out. The Flanders is is different in that aspect and is. Uh, well, the integrity of Flanders as an organizer is much better. But as a second aspect, I just think that Knocker Heis gave a lot of money and they said, okay, we'll do it there. <laughs> That's the, probably the, the actual reason, to be honest. And there's no, like, hills around there. Uh, you're going to have to look very far, perhaps a bridge <laughs> or two, I don't know. But you, right. you won't be finding a hill there. Why don't they have the sandy section on the beach? Well, I find out, isn't he cracked on the sand? That would be actually genius, but I think we are leaning into cyclocross then, to be honest. <laughs> All right, maybe there's another silver medal well, waiting, waiting for him there. <laughs> Could we not? Because Party Tour does the same in like field, so. Yeah, well, Antwerp, Port Epic, or <laughs> Dwa, what's another one? Glasgow Head Hageland or something? They, oh, they... that's genius. We should have organized that. Ah. Oh, anyway, it was a course that we thought suited Ghana, but six seconds, he beat Rimba on the Italy Imola course. It was Absolutely perfect for him last year. Beat Juan Van Aert by about 30 seconds. And yeah, Juan Van Aert, I think where's he come? Second at the road race at the Olympics, second here in the TT. Did he come second in the – no, he didn't come second in the Olympics TT. And he's second at Torreno. A lot of seconds this year, second at Amstel. Um, what do you think about the road race coming up, Benji? He's emptied the tank here, but he's looking in good condition. Does this change your opinion at all about the road race next week? Do you think – Oh, even between the dynamic between him and Avon Paul. I don't think this is going to change the dynamic. I honestly feel about these like pre-planned tactical road races, like, oh, this guy's leader, but that guy can have a free roll and such. In the race, 90% of the time, that changes. And it depends on what situation you get in. Sure, Wout van Aert is certainly the favorite if this goes to a reduced sprint or something like that, but... If the race is very hard, we've seen that Wout van Aert sprints have not always been up to standard compared to the ones after a not-so-hard race for him. But in all honesty, Wout van Aert should be a favorite for, for Belgium, certainly. When it comes to all-round, it's, uh, it's not easy to say that anymore after Cole Brilly has been winning on every single occasion, and except for when uh, he goes too early and Valgren is at, uh, in his wheel. But outside <laughs> of that, I think that Belgium's looking good for the road race, as simple as that, and they need to play it well as well now. And uh, I think that it's curious to see what Ghana will do most likely as well for me, because is he even riding a road race? Because I heard rumors that he was, and then suddenly he wasn't, but doing the mixed relay, and now I have no clue what he's riding anymore. Hey, on his PCS, he's not doing it. Um, yeah, That's I don't It's a bummer, know. isn't it? He's not doing Roubaix either. Which Wait, what? I don't think he's doing it's Roubaix. Illegal. Well... <laughs> That's just is stupid from my view. If he ever wants to target it, what better <laughs> time than like yeah. go in, you've just won this, you gonna you knew he's gonna do well here. There's no pressure really on him. He's still he's really young. You gotta learn Roubaix. You know, he's young, but he's not like he's not twenty either. He's twenty five. Like I if he wants to be good at Roubaix, I, I wouldn't be skipping. Basically it. retired. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> compared to other riders. Oh, we haven't spoken enough about Philippe Organo though, Benji. And is there, because yes. there was a lot of talk this year and we almost uh, got 
we, we actually, uh, I want to pat ourselves on the back, we nearly got lured into it with the European Championships result. Is there, are there two Filippo Ganners, which is a terrifying thought. Is there <laughs> Filippo Ganner that actually is, this is his level when he's actually focusing on a race and, and has had good preparation? And is there then Romandy or Swiss Filippo Ganner, which is like, just a completely different rider but even his Giro TTs weren't that good like the Milan TT 30 case he beat Cavagna only by 12 seconds this is even this is a different level to that Filippo Ganna do you think Olympics is the reason well firstly if you have multiple Ganna's the team time trial would be amazing (laughs) but next to that I think when it comes to uh Ganna it feels like we have a bit of a pattern and that is Every time there is a big goal coming up, the time trial beforehand, that is like one or two weeks beforehand, doesn't seem to be on the level that you would expect from a Ghana. And I don't know what to blame that for. Perhaps it's just accidental that the pattern is forming, but it feels like it's a bit on purpose, even though at European Champs, I thought he was flying through corners and not necessarily not taking risks. So it would surprise me that it is something on purpose in that European Champs thing, but it's starting to just repeat and repeat that every single time he's got a big goal, the time trial beforehand is not up to standards. And well, up to standards, let's be real. He's second at European championships. We can be (laughs) very harsh (laughs) if we say that as well, you know, but uh, it's notable. And I wouldn't say it's too Ganas. Perhaps it's just a a matter of how he prepares for the big goals. Exactly. And I think it's something to bear in mind is to look at, you know, what's at the Olympics, what's he been preparing for a four minute track effort, which is actually, you know, a bit like an anaerobic power effort. And then he's not really focused on the, a 50 minute TT in my view, but it's all no. subjective when you're looking at TTs and, you know, you got to, how do you really evaluate that? You don't know their shape coming into it. You, you don't like, know like the European champs, how focused he was on it really. It's like, Pogacar as well, when it comes to like the Tour de France last year before the Tour de France two weeks beforehand, his Dauphiné was not that amazing. And he actually uh, completely faded on the last stage. And if you look at this year before the Tour de France, he had that Slovenian ITT where he was destroyed. And it seems like it's a pattern as well. Perhaps in both occasions, it could both be accidental and we're like diving way too in depth and overthinking it. But it feels like it's something that we can use to analyze whether uh, the rider will be in good form afterwards because it seems to be something that is happening over and over. And when it comes to Pogacar, I think there were a lot of people like on on social media who were still expecting big things from Pogacar here. I honestly had no expectations at all, no. just in general, because uh, I feel like he's got other goals in mind than the World Championships ITT personally. And against the big guns on a World Championships parkour that is completely flat, I just don't see it happening. And um, that was clear today, even though he, his time was not actually terrible, you know, I think Top that is good. Yeah, I think so as well. But uh, let's say that Roglic is here in the shape that he is at Olympics. Where do you place him on the top 10, knowing it's a completely flat time trial? 49 minutes. I think he does. On uh, 49 minutes of Ghana? He's on 49 minutes, so... Oh. <laughs> I think he beats Tony Martin at, at worst. Uh, one would think. Like, I, I think he can beat Hayter easily. So, yeah. Pogaccia TDF TTs or Hilly TTs is different to his, not, his normal TTs. And he just got engaged as well, like, three days ago. So, um, he knew he couldn't win this race. It's, like, literally not a focus for him. So, But he still did, I think, a really, really good time trial. And it's good to get practice in doing those long TTs. And I think his real target is... Lombardia on the 9th of October. But yeah, any other storylines from this World Championships TT, Benji? Another, it's the same one, riders in first and second. But yeah, anything else that stands out to you? When it comes to like um, the time trial lists that we see as prologue riders, we spoke about Bissigal already that his time trial was pretty good. But like, for example, where do we see Cavagna these days? Because I feel like he's gone a step down in my ranking of time trialing versus when he was uh doing a great he was at Paris Nice this year where he uh, did a great time trial I think yeah Paris Nice he would have won right if they didn't have the car in the corner before him yeah I think he also won a Romandy TT Cavagna yeah. I think he's his limit is 20 minutes or 25 minutes I think just on yeah. and you can see it he went from he was eighth to the first intermediate finished 14th 
his pacing. It seems even when, even on the road when he attacks, he seems to go like for these long moves and then blow up early. Uh, but yeah, I think that is a disappointing TT. I think for him, Nelson Oliveira probably on a pretty slow setup is not a bad TT TT as well as Jos. Uh, Van Enden, but uh, as you said, Benji, the Athenis and, and Bissigas, quite quite good TTs from guys we think of as like a 10, 12 minute uh, time trialist. But we've we got any other TTs this year? We've got um, anything else left? Ah, uh, I don't know. Guangxi is not being written right, so <laughs> we won't be seeing that one. Now, I don't think we have time trials left. Perhaps in like Conti levels, but not on World Tour certainly, um, because we're nearing the end of the season, which is incredibly sad. Anyway, we'll see Gunner in the World Championships Rainbow Bands. They, they can roll out the same kit for him next year again. Fantastic performance from him. And if you want to watch, we probably won't have time for Eschborn Frankfurt recap today because it's finishing quite late and we had to get this recording done. I'll have the highlights. I've got the video rights for that on my main channel. We may do a recap tomorrow, particularly because there's a lot of the non-TT boys doing that for the World Championships as a tune-up like Christoph and Pedersen etc but until then even a poll looking pretty good can't wait to see whether he and wealth are not working synchrony at the road race next week we might have a filler podcast in between then if there's any more news but until then ciao